What's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep, and it is time to help you get your best score on CrossFit Games Open Workout 18.4. So this video is going to be filled with tips and strategy to help you get a better score on CrossFit Open 18.4. And I'm also giving away a bunch of free stuff this video. I got freaking knee sleeves, wrist wraps, bands, jump ropes. It's not broken. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you exactly how you can enter to win. I'm just going to be mailing out free stuff all week. Also, want to let you know that I am not affiliated with CrossFit HQ in any way, shape, or form. So this is all wad preps, opinions, and gear, and stuff like that. This has nothing to do with any affiliation with CrossFit HQ. And before we move any further, I want to let you know warming up for this workout is going to be extremely important. Heavy deadlifts, handstand push-ups, the warm-up's going to be critical. And if you want to get a complete video that teaches you step-by-step -step how to warm up for 18.4, make sure you go to wadprep.com slash open and you'll get our free strategy guide. It'll be the full one, plus you're gonna get a bonus video on how to warm up exactly for this workout. So if you want that, go to wadprep.com slash open and I'll send it straight to your email. Let's talk about 18.4. Overall, many, many people should scale this workout. In weeks past, I've talked about everyone should do RX, everyone should try it RX. This is one of the few workouts where I'm gonna caution people to try it RX if they're not ready. I think that you should scale this workout if the deadlifts are approaching or over your one rep max, if you have any pre-existing back injuries or back pain, and if you have any pre-existing neck injuries or neck pain. With all the deadlifts and handstand push-ups, there's gonna be a lot of pressure on the neck and the lower back, and I don't want anyone to get injured in this workout. So don't try to be a hero, be smart. If you think you need to scale this workout, it's totally fine to do that. Another thing I wanna mention, I did predict that handstand walks would be showing up in this year's Open. I predicted it for like three years though, but not many people need to worry about it. So if you're freaking out about the handstand walks, Please realize you have to get through Diane in a decent time, plus be able to pull 21 heavy deadlifts. If you can't do that, you're not gonna have to worry about the handstand walks. So that's why we're gonna save the handstand walk tips all the way for the end of this video. And one more tip before we move into the individual movements. If you think that you can make it through the first part of the workout, which is Diane, if you think you can make it through that, I really suggest not sprinting. So if you hit Diane at about 85 to 90%, that's gonna give you a little bit more gas in the tank so that you're able to pull those heavy deadlifts and hopefully hit some handstand walks. If you try sprinting through Diane and get a great score on Diane, it really doesn't matter if you can't even pull the deadlift because someone can do Diane a lot slower than you and then just get one deadlift or a few more deadlifts than you and they automatically beat your score. So remember, it's not about Diane specifically, but if you can get through it, make sure that you have enough energy to at least knock out a few of those deadlifts. In this video, we're gonna be covering scaled RX and master, so please bear with me. I'm gonna break it down movement by movement and we are starting off with the deadlifts. The first thing I wanna say about the deadlifts is that if this is a heavy-ish weight for you, singles are perfectly fine. In this video, you're gonna see me doing singles and I want you to notice how quickly I'm able to accumulate reps. And what's cool is that this is about 70% of the work that it would require if you were doing unbroken sets. So basically I'm picking the bar up and then instead of having to lower it all the way down to the ground, I'm able to drop from the top. It's not sexy, it's not fancy, but it is effective. So if the deadlifts are heavy, I will suggest doing small sets or even dropping down to singles earlier on in the workout. If you are doing singles or even sets, make sure that when you finish the last rep, whether it's a single or a bigger set, drop the bar from the top. Do not be one of those people that stand up and then they set the bar back down gracefully. Sure, you might get bonus points in a powerlifting gym, but you're not gonna get bonus points in the CrossFit Open. So at the top, lock out and then just drop the bar. That way you don't have to deal with all of that negative energy as you lower the bar down to the ground. Another thing for the deadlifts, I'm really gonna suggest negative splits. So what that means is that you start with a bigger set and with a smaller set. So for the set of 21, you could do eight, seven, six. That adds up to 21. For the set of 15, you could do 10, three, two, if you really wanted to. That's really just a personal preference of mine. I just like starting with bigger sets and then slowly able to drop off the reps. Another tip for the deadlifts is use a staggered grip. So for whatever reason, I see a lot of people wanting to deadlift with a double overhand grip. I really suggest having one hand underhand and one hand overhand. Sure, it's not like you're clean 
and you're not going to necessarily improve your hook grip strength, but an under and over grip, I call it a staggered grip, for me is way, way, way stronger. So if you've never tried it, I do encourage you to try pulling with a staggered grip. If that's something you don't like, if you'd rather hook grip or if you'd rather just do a double overhand grip, more power to you. But I just suggest if you've never tried it, try doing a staggered grip and you obviously can do it either way. Last thing for the deadlifts, make sure you wear a belt. Belts will definitely help you move the weight more quickly and more efficiently. It's gonna help control your core and give you more stability. So I am definitely going to be wearing a belt for this workout. Although I don't always do it, I am suggesting you wear a belt for this one. Let's move on to the handstand push-ups. We have a new standard of measurement this year, so make sure you go to games.crossfit.com to get the full standards to make sure you're doing this right. My first point is you have to practice before the workout to make sure that you can hit your reps consistently. I know there's gonna be people, there were people last year and the year before, they get their measurement, they do like one or two reps and they're like, yeah, I'm good, and then it's no rep, no rep, no rep, no rep as they go through the workout. So really focus on making sure you understand what gets your heels above that freaking line. That moves me on to my next point. Make sure the whole workout, the whole time you're doing handstand push-ups, all you're thinking is heels up, heels up, heels up. If you don't think about driving your heels up, you will get no reps. Because even if you just relax your ankles a little bit and you relax your feet a little bit, what's gonna happen is as your feet slide up the wall, your heel's gonna stick, your toe's gonna point up, and you will not have your heel above that line. Another thing that goes along with these new standards is your hand width really matters. If you naturally have a really wide stance with your hands, then you might actually not be able to get your heels above the line. As you can see here, I was kind of just messing around, moving my hands really wide and then really narrow. The narrower you move your hands, the higher your heels will be able to get because obviously you can reach higher here than here but you have to find that sweet spot. So I would just encourage you in practice before the workouts, find a good spot for your hands and try to stick with that. You can even mark it on the ground if you need to, or if you're using plates like I was, just know what part of the plate you need to put your hands. One thing we need to talk about with regard to these standards is you have to start with your heels above the line. Scott Panchik got no rep for it. I've seen so many people get no reps and I've also seen a lot of bro reps here. When you start, your heels have to be above the line. So when you kick up to the wall, you need to be thinking heels up and make sure your judge tells you you are okay to start. If you don't do that, you could potentially do an entire rep that doesn't count because you didn't start with your heels above the line. So I could go on for days about handstand push-ups, but we already have a ton of free videos here on YouTube and on Facebook that will help you get better. So click the floaty link here if you are on YouTube. If you click that link, it's gonna take you to a playlist where you'll be able to watch all of our handstand push-up training videos. Go watch those after you watch this, of course, and it's gonna help you improve your performance for 18.4, and we'll also be sending links to this in our complete strategy guide. So let's talk about the scaled and the master's division really quick, and then we will wrap up with handstand walks at the end. So for the scaled division, we're doing hand release push-ups and bear crawls. For the hand release push-ups, it's really important to make sure that you're not getting no repped or bro repped here. It's very easy to snake the push-ups. That's where your chest rises well before your hips do. You don't wanna do that. It's definitely a no rep and it looks super lame. So if that's something you struggle with, I want you to internalize starting with your butt first. So even when I'm doing hand release push-ups, I have a tendency to wanna to snake my way up or, or keep my butt sagging down. In order to keep that good plank position, what I started doing was thinking about butt first. So when I release my hands and I go to press, I think about someone's pulling my butt up on a string as I'm pressing up. And just that simple cue of, of butt first and making sure that my hips are rising with my shoulders, just thinking about that for every single rep prevents me from doing a snake. And then this is probably the most important part of hand release push-ups. And again, check the standards. I didn't triple check this, but I'm pretty sure it's okay. Make sure you rest at the bottom of your rep, not the top. So there's no time limit for how long you rest on the ground after releasing your hands. So as you can see here, this is me doing a rep. I take my hands off and I'm actually sitting down at the bottom for a little bit and then boom, I lock out and finish the rep. That is so much more efficient and you're gonna be a lot less fatigued compared to doing your hand release, doing the push up, and then resting in the front lean and rest position. You do not want to be resting there. You wanna be resting on the ground. 
And the last tip, and I will caveat this, I usually no rep this when I'm coaching athletes, but when I check the standards, it does seem like it's okay. So if you release your feet with your hands, I think the rep will get easier. So we can call this maybe a, a kipping hand release push up or just a hand and foot release push up, whatever you want to call it. All I know is that for me personally, and a lot of athletes, will naturally do this. If you lift your feet up while you lift your hands up and then you smack them both down on the ground at the same time, you kind of get almost like a kipping effect where you're snapping from an arch position to a hollow position and it's going to help you shoot up and finish those reps a little bit more efficiently. So again, check the standards, make sure your coaches and your judges are totally fine with it. But if it is legal, then doing a foot release potentially can help you rack up more reps more quickly. Let's touch on the bear crawl. I tested these a little bit and I found one major thing, actually two major things that I wanna talk about. Number one, don't be an idiot with your hands. Make sure you start with your hands behind the line. A lot of people are gonna be exhausted by the time they get there. They're gonna put their hands down. If your hands are across the line at all, it's technically a no rep and you're gonna to have to start again. So just don't make that mistake. Make sure your judge tells you it's okay. Suggestion number two is to have wide feet. So when I was practicing these a little bit earlier today, whenever I kept my feet narrow, it seemed a lot more fatiguing and a lot slower and a lot harder. But when I spread my feet really wide, like as you'll see in this video, it allowed me to move a lot faster and I didn't feel fatigued at all. It stayed with the standards. My butt was always higher than my head and I was able to move a lot more quickly. I kind of kept my legs straight too. I didn't have to bend them and it felt like my steps were farther. So just play around with it, see what works for you. But I would suggest having wide feet as you bear crawl. So for those of you doing the 55 plus masters division, you have push press. I'm sure you know how to do push press if you're hitting it RX at the age of 55 plus. But one thing I wanna say with the push press is to make sure that you do touch and go. So as you can see in this video, it's really important that when the weight hits your shoulders, you should spring right back up into the next rep. There's no use doing this where you let the bar come down, you have to totally reset and then do the next rep. So just do touch and go. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. You'll be able to rack up reps quicker and also remember to breathe. So last but not least, let's talk about the handstand walks. The number one thing here is don't do a hand fault. A lot of people tend to do these running start things where they put their hand down and it crosses the line. Don't do that because it's a no rep here. So be really cautious where you put your hands down make sure that you're smart about that because if you are racking up handstand walks, the last thing you want to do is have to come back to the beginning and restart. The next thing I want to say is we do have tons of videos about handstand walks. So I really suggest clicking the floaty link here if you're on YouTube or just going to YouTube and typing in wad prep handstand walk. You should find our playlist and our playlist has tons of videos teaching you all the different intricacies about how to handstand walk more efficiently. So if you want a crash course on handstand walking, make sure you check out our videos and you will definitely improve. I can't cover all the tips in here, so just spend a little extra time between now and when you hit the workout, watch our handstand walk videos, and I promise you it's gonna help at least move the needle a little bit so that if you do get there in the workout, you'll be ready to get some reps. All right, I hope you liked that video. Remember, if you want the complete warm up and full strategy guide to go along with this workout, it's gonna be really important, probably more important than any of the other open workouts so far. If you want all of that, you gotta to go to wadprep.com open to download our full strategy guide, and I will personally email you the link to that warm up video. Next, if you want free gear, here's what you need to do. I'm giving away jump ropes, knee sleeves, wrist wraps, bands, all kinds of stuff. I have a bunch of stuff lying around. A lot of it is courtesy of Wad Nation. And if you want that, here's what you need to do. Comment below. If you are on YouTube or Facebook, it doesn't matter which one. If you wanna do both, you can. Comment below and let me know where you are watching this from. And I also want to know what your profession is. You don't have to get crazy detailed if you don't want to, but where are you watching from? It could even be a state. It doesn't have to be a city, but where are you from? and what's your profession. I'd love to get to know the Wad Prep athletes a little bit more. I wanna learn where the Wad Prep family is from. Me, I am in Tokyo or just outside of Tokyo, Japan, and I do this, I make videos for you. So leave a comment below and you'll be entered to win 
one of these awesome items and I'll, and I'll ship it personally to you. Thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't. Make sure that you subscribe to the Wad Prep channel, that way you don't miss any more videos. And thank you so much for watching another week of our open strategy guides. Peace.